Well, hello and welcome to this tutorial video on Time for War. So what is Time for War? Well, it's a turn-based tactical strategy game that um, has its roots in board games and tabletop war games. But it uses um, uh, graphics in similar vein to uh, 3D graphics that you would find in a real-time strategy game. So it's kind of a crossover between the graphics of, of uh, real-time strategy games but with the the pause for thought that, that you get with a turn-based strategy game. So um, this tutorial I'm just going to go through the keys and concepts, uh, mechanics and stuff like that. So in order to do that what I'll do is start off with a hot seat mode and I'll basically switch sides and basically play out some part of a um, two-player game. So hit the hot seat mode and then basically the game will load up and show you your units. Now both sides have units that are of equal strength and basically the units are <coughs> symbolic in that they recognize uh, or represent certain types of unit type. So you'll have artillery, um, transport, recon, um, aircraft, uh, motorcycles, and basically both sides will ha do have exactly the same layout. You know, so in order to to keep the sides matched, you would have, for example, a Pershing would go up against the Tiger tank. Uh, you know, and an M10 will go up against the Panzer IV. Um, so, <clears throat> although they aren't exactly like for like, but in this um, mode of the game, the idea is this that both units start in exactly the same position on equal and opposite sides of the game board, and uh, deployed in exactly the same way, with exactly the same um, uh, strengths and weaknesses. And also, you can see that in this uh, in this map, there's um, it's quite an open map. There's not an awful lot um, that get in the way that you might see with other types of maps. And the, the reason for that, there's a couple of reasons for that. One is that um, the idea behind this game is a is a, uh, it's kind of a hide and seek. It's maneuver warfare rather than a war of attrition. So the idea is that you try and um, outmaneuver your opponent, and in doing so you gain um, a tactical advantage and so um, if you manage to catch your opponent off guard and they fall into a, an ambush or something like that then you're going to win the engagement and tankers of the time typically said that he who sees the enemy first uh, has a massive advantage in the engagement and often won. Obviously that depends on what's firing on what so if you've got you know, a Sherman firing at uh, a Tiger tank at long range, then obviously that's not an even battle. But uh, in fairly even terms of battle, if you see them first, uh, you start firing at them, they're going to be shook up. They're going to be, uh, they, they're not going to know where you are. They're going to button up, so the vision's going to be neon zero. And then they've got to try and traverse the turret to try and track you. By that time, you've you've hit them with a few shots and you're going to knock them out. So that's the principle of the game. So uh, some units have great visibility in this game, so infantry units they're like the um, the heart of the game I would say because you know for example this if I click on this like laser icon it shows you that the unit can fire on the targets within the red circle so its range isn't very far it can suppress targets within the purple circle and it can see targets that are within the blue circle uh, the difference between firing to kill and firing to suppress is obvious that you've got the extra range. So what you could potentially do is prevent a target from advancing on you because if they get um, uh, suppressed then they can, they can no longer advance and also for one turn the vision becomes impaired so that they don't provide any value to the rest of the team members. So. Looking at infantry units, you can see they've got great vision. If we take a, a tank, for example, then it's the exact opposite. 
tanks can't see anything so they rely on the infantry to provide them with intel and you might be able to see just at the back we've got a red marker there that shows the extreme distances that tanks can fire on now you can see other things like for example that the terrain is not flat and uh, you know most of these shells fire at a flat trajectory you know basically if your shot is gonna you know if you can see a unit because you've got intel from infantry uh, that doesn't necessarily mean you can fire on it. it all depends on whether you've got a clean shot or not but the the idea is that the infantry and the recon units provide the intel and the, the tanks and artillery provide the damage uh, capability so and you see at the back here there's this unit with uh, with an icon above it which shows that this is a commander unit if commander units get destroyed then essentially that's it the game's over so the idea is to protect your commander unit but uh, so so in, in some ways this game is kind of like chess it's a bit like chess brought into the 21st century uh, units uh, and also unlike other turn-based games there are no hexes in this game you can move wherever you like um, you're, depict, you're constrained by the unit and how far it can move in an action and I'll demonstrate that now so <clears throat> uh, if I take this uh, Sherman tank here and I left click so I left click to select the unit and then I can left click on the terrain and basically it will pathfind to wherever you click so and then you get a white marker and the white marker basically shows you where that unit will stop uh, and that, that's the movement over for this turn. Now if I click on the um, this information icon here I can see these uh, these markers, the uh, icons pop up now. Blue is basically your move marker, so your move action, so if that's lit up that means that these units can all move and the yellow um, indicator shows that all these units can also fire if they have a weapon. So not all of them do. Uh, so basically that means that this tank can move and it can still fire and these green uh, squares underneath show the armor so um, <coughs> I'll show this in a minute but basically you've got front left right and rear and all units that have different type facing armor have four blocks and units that basically have that no armor or soft armor of a certain value It'll just show you uh, just one bar. An infantry obviously have no armor, but they have basically the equivalent of, of health points. So some units are really good at, like for example, tanks, really good at firing at armored units. Not very good at firing at infantry. So they won't do much damage to infantry. Like it will take two or three shots for a tank to try and to take out infantry, whereas you've got a 50 cal on the side of the M3 that will take out the infantry pretty quick in one go so balancing all these different attributes and you know vision is all is, is, is basically how this game is played so uh, if I left click on this this tank here and basically decide where I want it to go um, so this will indicate and then I click the right click button and move the tank along the path towards the white marker so you can do this really quickly so I can basically just re You don't have to do left click first. Left click on the unit and then right click straight away and tell you where you want it to go. So obviously these tanks move so far. So this motorbike, this can move a lot further basically. So you could send that up into the front line early and try and get some good recon on enemy units and then there's things you can do with the tanks like you can put them in sentry mode we'll go over that in a minute so infantry can load into um, um, this half track so so this icon shows that I've got two infantry loaded and I've got it's basically towing an anti-tank gun so what you could do then is move that um, up towards a good firing position and then as long as you've got vision what you could potentially do on the next turn it's on the brow of this hill unload the anti-tank gun face it in whichever direction you wanted and then hit sentry mode and then any tanks that come into its field of vision 
would get fired upon automatically. So, so let's basically <coughs> move some of these units out. So the idea really is to try and cover the flanks. So essentially, there's this area of rock formation here is quite a good point to uh, to cover your left flank, and around this building on the right is perhaps a good area to cover your right flank. So infantry unit, so support unit. Uh, this here is artillery. So uh, re artillery, if you think of, has uh, basically it, it doesn't require a line of sight to attack. Um, you'll see an icon. You'll see a, a line, projected line that shows you uh, an arc tra trajectory. But essentially, artillery is effectively death from above. So um, the they're almost like uh, really, really valuable sniper units. Um, they're not going to take out tanks, but they'll take out soft targets really easy. And so, in some ways, you can think of artillery units as the queen. And then, obviously, this here in a chess sort of analogy, this would be a king. And you can see it can hardly move at all. And if this thing gets destroyed, then it's game over. So, there are two win conditions in this game. You can win via. Um, getting a points victory, so if you manage to hit 750 points at the top, here you can see the points, if you hit 750 points before your your opponent, then you'll win a points victory. If you manage to uh, to get behind enemy lines and take out this the commander unit, then you'll win uh, the game outright on a knockout victory. And then the other unit I've not described is the aircraft, and here we have a Spitfire, now these units uh, have got really good, I mean they're, they're really really valuable units but they can get taken out really easy. They're essentially any armoured unit with a with a cannon can fire on these things and knock them out. They've got great mu uh, mobility, great vision, they've got uh, cannons on them, they can take out units, they're really valuable and they're really good in the end game where you're trying to hunt down your enemy's commander and take them out because they've got great mobility. Um, what you might want to do in this kind of game is take out your opponent's infantry as a primary target. If you take out your opponent's soldiers, then essentially they've got no ability to, no recon, and they're relying on the tanks, which have got very bad vision. So you can essentially just basically uh, take your units and just drive right through up to your enemy's commander and just take them out. The tanks can't see you, and so. Uh, unlike some games where infantry take on infantry and tanks take on tanks and if you lose your infantry it doesn't matter with this if you've lost your infantry it's as good as game over so so that's turn one what I'll do is I'll just end turn and we'll go over and look at the turn one for the axis units and what I'll do is I'll just left click on the unit you can have a left click to see where it's going to go or right click. So I'll do exactly a very similar star. So I'll move some of these units up. Again, this is the artillery unit. So we've got two different flavors of anti tank gun. You can see here there's a pack 40, and on the other, uh, sorry. And the the other side, which has already been loaded, is a pack 38. So your pack 40 is going to be uh, your heavy tank destroyer, and your pack 38 is going to do your medium tanks, but it isn't going to damage the heavy tanks. Um, so, okay, and this is the like the the Cuba wagon is the equivalent to the Jeep. The sort of uh, Puma here is the equivalent to the M8. So everything everything has a, an equivalent. So. Everything's laid out in exactly the same way, and there is no um, uh, advantage from it, from either side in terms of units. It's uh, everyone. They, they, both teams have got exactly the same. So again, we'll move the aircraft up. Not wise to take the aircraft out of the front line early on in the game because uh, it can get taken out, and that's a big disadvantage. So. What I'll do now is I'm going to put some tanks on the ground as well. I'll um, sort of move some infantry 
Ross, try and get some good vision, some good recon. So what I'll do is you always unload from the rear. So, so I'm going to take this guy and grab the front. Now, this is a dangerous move because, you know, this guy can quite easily get picked off. But by pushing forward, I just want to show you a couple of things. One is that I'm going to show you works. So I'm just going to push it to the top. So let's and again so I think of these units as sort of like tabletop gaming units because that's the kind of principle behind the game. Sort of Warhammer esque style units so, uh, style um units rather than um, other types of tabletop games so so here basically I have got a pack 38 it's not going to take out the big tanks but what you can do is you can look at its field it's basically it's firing so it's right off the scale right at the back you can see how far but you can't you can't see anything what you can do is you can put these things in sentry mode and again so let's move this what you could do is take out that cable wagon quite um, sorry yeah the uh, sorry the uh, the Zenap uh, motorcycle because that obviously has got recon capability so um, what I'll do is found the enemy there. so take the wall the no wall these are already fired so it's already moved so take the purging and you can so see here as well this is quite useful uh, it shows you the armor um, damage that's going to do against the enemy unit so it's showing you here that if you you will hit you're going to do 200 points worth of damage to the front armor so if we fire now you can see that it's showing you what's left so this unit has now got 100 points of front armor 200 left 200 right and 100 uh, at the back. So another shot. Have we got any more shots on that one? So this one here's got a shot. So if he takes a shot again, this is showing you that this uh, this is because this is a uh, this is a um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's either a 76 millimeter Sherman or a Firefly. The US side or the Allied side, there is a Firefly unit, so that's the Firefly, yeah, and that's the 76, and then there's just a normal M4A2, I think. Oh, no, it's just those two. So, anyway, this uh, unit fires and it's gonna destroy. It. So, uh, we'll put this one in sentry mode, this one sentry mode, move this out of the way because your own units can block your own line of sight. Move that up there to get a little bit more vision, and then uh, we'll move this out of the way. See how far this shows you. So, what you'll see again is pathfinding now is showing you how far this unit can move and which path it's going to take. So, um, what else can we do here? Yeah, we could take this unit here. Let's, move here. Let's unload the empty tank gun. this is a good unit, this is the artillery unit and then you've got again a good unit there it's got a machine gun be the, be the Vickers and then so what we can do is take this and rotate so that's the the arrow that rotates your unit and then you can target the, and now that if you catch your enemy unaware and you found them well they've got units uh, the transporting units and t uh, anti-tank guns it's going to be a bad day for them because they're going to lose <laughs> so, so so this unit is uh, an artillery unit so it's indirect fire so it's going to fire a mortar so there's the trajectory now like I say when you fire artillery type weapons it's effectively death from above uh, it's like them dropping out of the sky so your artillery units are quite valuable units um, and 
if you can see an enemy at a distance and it's a, a soft target, then your artillery are going to that and then uh, what else can we see so it's all about maneuvering your units in a position so you can see what's happening with your enemy and there's the aircraft there so where's the so M8s these units quite good are just um, firing on the aircraft so it's not fired yet so and then click on that and then we can so effectively we've already racked up 520 points and uh, so at 750 points that's it, it's game over you win on the points victory so what I'll do now is I will move this into position and show you what happens when you uh, get tripped by sentry mode so here you can see that it uh, did get hit. It's uh, it's got pretty good armor on it, so um, it didn't take it out. Um, and it all depends on what fired on it as well. So if I take this unit here, no, that's not got so much armor. You can see what's happening here is that you can get in a good position and then push your units in sentry mode. Then it can be really advantageous because you're gonna kind of like uh, be king of the so finish here. Again, this has got good armor, but one of the things you can do is lay down the uh, and that can give you a good um, tactical advantage if you want to try and um, say, for example, your enemies uh, got great interlocking fire uh, across uh, covering the flanks and such, and you want to try and cross a dangerous pathway. Like for example, going from going from uh, this hut across to this ruins, and someone's got um, you know sentry mode, uh, a few vehicles set up in sentry mode, you're not going to stand a chance. But if you can get one of your units to lay down some smoke, then uh, they can't see you and they can't fire on you. So what you can do is lay up behind the smoke, and then on your next turn, make it into the safe cover on the other side. So um, yeah, I mean, essentially, there's a lot, there's a lot more to the game than um, you know meets the eye. There's there's all sorts of different things you can do, like you know, going through these icons. So you've got information that uh, shows you what you know action points you've got left and the uh, the uh, the armor. Then you can select on a unit and see um, so select on a unit, click on the laser, and that shows you how far it can see. And you've got sentry mode, smoke, unload, rotate, fire, and then you've got this uh, this strange looking uh, spider icon is the suppression icon, which allows you to fire at longer distances and suppress units. And um, yeah, so, so that's it. What I'll do is I'll just play out the rest of this game just quickly and show you. So this is a Pac-40. Pac-40 is a great uh, anti-tank gun. So um, we'll rotate this and let's take on something meaty that we can see. And we'll start going on that tank. So I've shown you there, it's going to do 300 points of damage to the front of that tank, and that'll pretty much take it. And there you go. Shot. Um, so you can also see the range. Uh, you can see the range of infantry units in the same way. This has got good vision and good um, fire um, range. So, uh, so I'm going to take a shot on that. Um, what you can do is, again, soft targets are great for artillery. Great for taking out anti tank guns, actually, so this will be a good one. So, um, brilliant way to take out anti tank guns as long as you can see them. So, if you lose all your infantry, then that's it. Uh, you're not going to see anything, and it's going to find it very difficult to uh, to progress. So Pershing, this is the most uh, powerful tank in the Americans' arsenal, and uh, I only need a few points to win this game. So I'm going to uh, take out, uh, take a few shots on this. To, to the, uh, it's the Panzer IV. There's one showing you it's down to 200 armor. So 
going to take a couple more shots here. The shame going to do 200, so this should be enough to take it out. Let's just uh, line it up again. Again, we can look at the line of sight. And. So, uh, the winner are the Allies, and they won on a points victory because they managed to, uh, to reach the points victory target range of 750 points. And that's a tutorial gameplay video of Time for War. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks very much.